everything about this album really has just been like you just knock it out yeah. and you've rehearsed it like fucking infinite amount of times as well oh, yeah. I know you have because I heard you did it mm. so yeah it's just like you know, apart from the fact that it's taken like yeah, I was months say to do the the actual recording process has been fucking man, easy. Man, it's been like if we'd have just done it in a week, yeah, it would have taken like yeah. less than a week. Yeah, um, crazy shit's gone down. Yeah, crazy shit. A gone lot down. of stuff has happened. I'm Troy, I play drums. I'm Ricky, I play guitar and sing. I'm Tommy, I play bass and sing a bit too. We're Glove. I wanted to write a punk rock album, you know? Um, but I wanted it to be not a punk rock album. I wanted it to be a punk rock album that was punk rock at its soul, but had some real emotional points in it, mm. which punk rock can have, you know? But I didn't want to be this punk rock band that didn't say anything about anything. I didn't want this punk rock band to write wacky songs about going out and getting fucked, you know? Um, but, the, I mean, the sound almost happened by accident. Yeah. Like, the, the sound came about... Um, the sound really started to become its own thing when Troy joined the band because of, like, that sort of, like that raw power that he brought towards it, which kind of spurred me and Tommy on to be like, okay, let's ramp it up a little bit. And I started writing a little bit heavier and a little bit more aggressive, um, which matched the what it, how I wanted to come across and what I wanted to say. So that was really important to like sculpt in the sound of the band. So I just use a bass drum, snare drum, floor tom, a ride cymbal and hi-hats. Um, it wasn't set out to be like that. Um, I couldn't afford any other cymbal. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was just playing with the one uh, big ride cymbal for a while, and then it became natural, and I've tried adding more stuff now. It just doesn't work. Like, I've found my own setup, which works for me and the band. Yeah. If you can play like Troy plays, right, you don't need anything else. All you need is a fucking beat. That's all you need. I think our sound is, it's a piece of all of us, because we all, we all have very similar music tastes, but we all also all have very specific wants. We all, we all know what, what kind of music we like and mm. what, what we enjoy playing, and I think that Glove as a Band, it's almost like a showcase of everything we mm. like, because... There can be a really nice soft song with a heavy breakdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like like if, if someone was screaming over it, it could sound like a heavy song. But yeah. it's it's heavy in its own way. We recorded an EP, 
which um, went really, really well. Um, and we recorded here with James, and we knew that we wanted to use him again, but spend more time on it. And we just wanted it to be bigger and better. It wouldn't have turned out how it did without James. No. James has been an integral part of this. It's yeah. a, like a part of the band, basically. Yeah. Um, He's sort of got this passion about the band that nobody really has put into us before. I certainly haven't with any other band I've been in. Having someone there to actually want to record us mm -hmm. and quite literally saved us from splitting up ones. Um, without that, we wouldn't be here doing this. My mate Morgan had been working on the side with uh, James and just helping out in the studio and stuff. But he, he pushed me to get in touch with James and get us into the studio to record the EP on that weekend. It's, 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 well, it's kind of thanks to Morgan, really. Mm. Um, he's, he's just kind of been here throughout the process and has, has really helped out, like, not just being there, like, getting us tea and stuff. He's actually been very vocal about how things might sound and what we should do, different styles, and it's... It's been great having him there as well as a, as a, as an extra. Because he's a musician too. Yeah. So to have another musician, James is a musician as well, and that's, I think, what's kind of helped the album along as well, is having other musicians in the room. Because you think when you write something, you think you've got it perfect, you think you've got it right, and it's kind of difficult to be like, no, I'm not changing anything because I wrote <laughs> it and it's good. But, you know, it's good to have, like, that third... Um, or fourth person to say maybe this, maybe this, and you know it's it's, it's good. One of the things that we wanted to do um, was spend more time on the drums, because you know um, James is known as the drum guy. You know he knows how to record drums because obviously his his history going over to Chicago and doing all of that. Um, so we knew we wanted to record the drums better, and um, you know James will say this: the space that he has to do the drums here wasn't the biggest space that he wanted. Um, so he went out um, and then found the chapel. He went and recorded a bunch of stuff there and showed it to us. He also recorded some drums in other places. Um, so he put all of these three, I think it was three, to us. And he said, I think this one would be the best. And we were like, you're the sound guy. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, but it sounded, you know, it sounded great. It's like an old church that had been converted into a studio. Just setting the drums up and hearing the drums in there without them being recorded was like, wow, that's going to sound great. Yeah, know? I remember the first like time I hit the bass drum. It's just like, boom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because we wanted to capture that that room. Yeah. You know, you can you can record the drums anywhere, but you need, you need a room to get that natural sound. Um, and this place was perfect. It was very accommodating as well. We spent a weekend in there. Um, we stayed over. Whoa, I've never been allowed in a church before. I'm going to burn in the church. <clears throat> Am I looking forward to recording Glove? I guess I have to say yes. Yeah. Well, not so much. Not so much. I, I prefer working against them. And they're doing a sabot sabotory. Getting Troy kicked out. That was my biggest achievement. <laughs> the no added sugar beans so we oh, put in a no. fat swedge of butter in it. it smells like fart it smells like fart beans do not need six minutes yes they do what? if you want your beans to be reduced right you need six minutes that, was, that seems extreme it's a sort of fucking fact i won come dine with me i was on the fucking telly right this boy here won come dine with me fucking tell me how to cook beans this is gonna put 
take 51. Your whole life has led up to this moment. Yeah, don't fuck up. <laughs> no pressure. Um, but all the pressure in the world. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm hedging all of my life's aspirations and dreams on you not fucking up. Wow. That's heavy, dude. That's right, strain. Didn't bring a second guitar. Because I'm useless. Should have brought a backup. Should have done. Should have done. It's my guitar. I, I prefer to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, Troy, uh, your headphones are there. Next to you, you've got a mixer. Um, you can control the volume of, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. The one that says James is the uh, is my talkback. Sure. Uh, the one that says drums is yourself. Uh, and your main volume control, your master volume control, is the black fader. Sure. Cool. Yeah. yeah. doing that <laughs> why why would you sacrifice ergonomics for for, for having something so unconventional uh, just, why would you do that why would you have your hi hat that high up it just doesn't make sense to me i don't i wouldn't do that and therefore you shouldn't do that either <laughs> You guys have been like just doing this set over and over again, uh -huh. and I've been like sitting in the control room just listening to it, thinking like this is cool, and listening to you go from one song to the other. Uh -huh. uh, I'm just gonna leave it running, and you can do exactly what you do um, when you're having a jam. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not really even gonna stop between songs. I'm just gonna leave it going, and you, you just keep going. Okay, sounds good. All right, hold on one second. Ready? And go for it.
People say that being in a band is like fun, right? It's not, <laughs> is it? Like being in a band when you're writing the songs and when you're trying to get people together and then when you're trying, you know, you're trying to get shows and all of this shit. Like people think that it's fun. It's really fucking hard and it can be really, really soul destroying sometimes. But playing live is why you do it, and it, like you, when you're on stage, all of that shit disappears, and then it's just three of you existing in one bubble, existing in your own bubble. You know, everything else disappears, and that's I think that's what it's all about. You know, Ricky is the reason I started music anyway. So growing up, I always wanted to, I always wanted to be in a band with him because as I'd always see it, and I'd tried getting in on his old, his practices and stuff to see him and, and now I'm actually like now I'm in a band with him and we're doing really well and we've got this album it's kind of almost like a it's like a goal ticked off it's 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 great I, I enjoy it every time and yeah I can't yeah that's, that's one of my favourite bits about it yeah. so you talked a little bit about that during this whole process you guys almost split up could you say a little bit more about that? right um yeah well um, Troy had to leave the band, um, and we, it was, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a, um, it was a shock for sure, um, but we just wanted to keep going, um, so we got, we got my, my good friend Arthur in, um, and he was great, it was, it, it was really good, um, but it got to a point where it was, we'd, we'd missed like three or four practices, um, and we then ended up missing another one and I just called Ricky and I was just like, we have to get Troy back, otherwise we can't do this because it's it just wasn't glove. Mm. Um, I, I don't know, I just didn't feel comfortable enough without Troy with a different drummer. And then, um, like Tommy said, we were missing practices and like I, you know, we weren't communicating, me and Tommy, we weren't communicating whatsoever and we were arguing and it all just sort of, uh, one night after I'd drunk a, a lot of wine. I kind of did. I ring you or did I text you? I can't remember. I think you wrong me. I think yeah, and I was just like, you don't do it. <laughs> I just we just had a big fucking argument yeah. about it. And then James came in and was like, you two, come to the studio. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about this. <laughs> so like me, Tommy, and and uh, Arthur come to the studio. And I didn't even want to look at you. Yeah. Remember, I walked in. <laughs> Honestly, man, you should have been here. It was fucking salty. like yeah, the the, uh, the <laughs> that environment was toxic for a while. And uh, anyway, Tommy was like sat on the couch, and I came in. I'm like, don't fucking talk to me, mate. Don't, don't. And then James was like, what are you doing? Like, the, 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 you you've got something too good here to let this shit happen. And you know, a producer that doesn't want to do that for a band isn't the right person to be recording the band because they don't want to do it for the passion of doing it. They want to do it because it's a fucking paycheck. You know, and, you know, that's why James was important. Yeah. Very important. It was amazing because, like, as soon as I quit, I instantly regretted it. And seeing them on Facebook, like, playing shows with Arthur and that, I thought they were doing really well. And Was it like seeing, like... I know, like your girlfriend cheating on you, like seeing another drummer playing. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Was it just like, <coughs> fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, I was right? really jealous about it. It felt like a breakup, though. It felt yeah, like when, it when, when, when Troy left it, felt, when you left it, felt like a breakup. It felt yeah. like there was, this, there was this period of mourning where we were just like, I can't believe it. When it happened, yeah. I went and saw Arthur like, in the morning. I was like, I was like, Arthur, wake up, and I was like, fuck. I'm just like, please, please. Troy's left the band. He sat up and he was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> like, like it, it was like I was. Be, it was like he was looking after me. It was just like, it's okay. Yeah. We'll get over it. There's plenty more fish in the sea. But that's the um, thing about bands as well. That <laughs> most of the time, bands are mates and brothers. Mm. You know, um, but you kind of create a little family within your band, and you play shows together. You practice. You're constantly with each other. You know, and for someone to leave that environment, someone to leave that, and you go from seeing them all the time, being creative with them, and you know, playing shows with them, and sharing these moments of like pure agony, but also these moments of like that was the best set that you know, and you, and then for that person to not be there anymore, it's you do grieve that. I think mm, I, I do sure. think you you do mourn that in some sort of way. Yeah, like I said, you need these three people to have love because without it. 
it wouldn't work because we tried it and it doesn't work. Hello. At last. At last. At last. <laughs> We're here to create. How's it going, man? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Should we, with the distortion, yeah. should we have that running through DI and just recording constantly so we can yes. drop it in and out? Absolutely. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's what I'm going to get. I don't have to think about it. Well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. trying to record guitars for what seems like years. We've been hampered by illness, fatigue, two world wars and an infestation of frogs. But we're doing it today and there's Ricky through there playing guitar now, playing my guitar, having what appears to be the time of the work. Um, I shall warn you, my Tourette's is very bad today. I'm very, very ticky. So, I'm going to have to try not to Tourette all over the recording. Are you having fun? Uh, right, so there's a shitload of pedals in there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Let's open up. Go. <laughs> very good. It's like that scene in, uh, what's it? Where they don't know what's in the thing. And he opens up and his face oh, is it. Pop fiction. He's like, are we good? We good. I've only yeah. ever seen half that film. Oh, baby. Oh my god. Fuck me. I'll look at this. Bye. Most songs that I think people want to hear or what people like come from a place of uh, pain and come from a place of um, uncertainty um, because that's where the artist is the most sincere. My life uh, leading up to uh, this album had been bad. I was struggling with um, heroin addiction. Um, which uh, came after five years of being addicted to opiate painkillers. Um, and that stumped all of this like creativity that I had inside of me. I, I, I was writing, but I thought I, was, I thought I was someone else. You know, I was writing and I was... So everything that I was writing was like a love letter to heroin, you know? I just wanted the album to tell a story of someone who had a real bad time who had lost more or less everything that he had and loved because of a drug, but then dealing with the loss of the people that he loved, um, but also coming through that um, and getting used to being on your own, getting used to the person that you are. Because once when you're an addict, you, you, you especially when you use a drug like heroin, it, it's oblivion. 
you know, it sends you into a place where nothing exists. But that's what you're after. I did that because it's what I wanted. And once you don't have that drug, it's like all of your emotions explode into this rocket um, and it just explodes over the earth. Um, and then you have to kind of pick all the pieces up and put them back together again. Um, and Glove was a very important part of that because if I didn't have the band um, while I was trying to get clean, I wouldn't have this focus that I needed something there to keep me together. Because if I didn't have that, I would have just used again, you know? I I don't like to hear it, but I but I need to hear it because I need to know mm. where he is and pl- playing the music and hearing the songs and singing the lyrics. I can get as close as I can to her, how he was feeling at any of those points. Um and I think that's quite important because it Everyone can take what they want from lyrics. Every, everyone will, will relate the words to their own situations. Um, but being able to almost put yourself in that place is a really important part of understanding what uh, him and what other people go through. The title track of the album, is uh, This Is Gonna Hurt, I remember the practice we wrote that song. I remember singing the lyrics and just, I burst into tears. Um, And it tapped into some deep place I I didn't think I was. I didn't think think, um, I was there. And it was quite a pivotal moment in my life uh, because I, it made me realize that I had to make a certain change. this band is incredibly important for, I think, all of our well-being because we have all been through a lot. That's what that song <coughs> is meant to signify, you know. That whole year was was shit for all of us. We had a real... Each of us had, like, shit going on that was real bad. And um, I wanted a song... I wanted to write a song that was personal to me but could be it could be relatable to the band as well, you know. That's why the album's called This Is Gonna Hurt. That's why that the last lines of that album are just screamed out, This mm. Is Gonna Hurt, over and over and over again. Not in a... I know, I don't see that as, like, a, a bad way. I see that yeah. as, like, a... It's like, it, you know, you're uh, expelling that shit from yourself, you know? Like, this is gonna hurt, it did hurt. I'm telling you how much it's gonna hurt. Um, so we can put that shit away again you know um that's how i see that that's what how i wrote it anyway you know Publicize in your eyes to see your mother's eyes don't.